Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, very quick poll. Uh, who has used QGIS 3D before? Ah, okay, cool. Quite some people. All right. Uh, just very briefly about me. Um, I'm a software developer. I work for Lutra Consulting. And uh, yeah, we do QG software development, among other things. But uh, the most important thing, QG 3D. Why do we need uh, 3D views? Um, there are plenty of reasons. I chose one of my favorites because 3D uh, terrain visualization is uh, very cool. Uh, it can it has a lot of use for urban planning and uh, yeah, plenty of other applications. And uh, QGIS has been the, um, going on for quite a lot of time now, but the 3D uh, third dimension was always lacking. So before we had uh, the native uh, QGIS 3D support. There were some other uh, free software tools that people could use. So there was this um, NVIS tool from GrassGIS. Uh, GVSIG had some uh, support for 3D views. Um, there was, um, and there still is a Globe plugin in QGIS itself. Um, but the integration was never um, great with the rest of QGIS. And we wanted to have really this nice integrated experience like you have with all the other tools. Um, so, very quickly about the history, in 2017, um, uh, we had a uh, QGIS uh, grant proposal accepted to start the initial uh, work on uh, QGIS 3D, and then um, one year later, the first release of um, QGIS 3D was there in QGIS 3.0. Um, most recent news is that uh, this year during the summer we had a summer of code project uh, with uh, Ismail Sunni here. You can wave to others uh, who has done a really great job and implemented a bunch of new nice things. Um, so quickly about uh, how to use QGIS 3D. Um, if you use some of the more recent versions, um, you just click the view menu, new uh, 3D map view, and there you get like a new uh, widget where you can uh, see the 3D content. So it can look uh, something like this. So on the top part, uh, that's the usual 2D map canvas. On the bottom part, you can see the 3D view already with some uh, 3D styling. Um, so uh, this is just like a a bit of a zoomed in portion of that scene. Um, so let's go slowly about uh, like what are the pieces of um, the 3D scenes uh, that we work with. Uh, so let's start with terrain. Uh, the terrain we generated uh, based on heat maps. And uh, uh, so you have a raster layer uh, with uh, your ter uh, digital terrain elevation model. And so based on that, we generate this uh, 3D mesh like you can see here on the illustration. And then on top of this uh, mesh, uh, we need to apply some um, texture. This texture, we just take the 2D rendered uh, map and um, we put it there. Um, so basically, um, when you first time open the 3D window, you uh, see the 2D map as usual, but with the thing that you can start uh, turning the map even into the perspective and so on. Um, so the terrain, you can uh, configure it in the um, configuration dialog. Uh, so uh, on the left side, you can see uh, like the default view when the terrain is just uh, flat with the uh, uh, texture on top of it. On the right side, uh, when we already apply some um, digital elevation model there. You can also set the vertical scale uh, to kind of make your uh, 3D terrain look more pronounced. Uh, now, how about the vector data? So the key part when um, Doing uh, dealing with vectors is to use this uh, layer styling uh, dog widget, 
Um, you can also double click on the layer to open the full dialog um, with properties, but this one is more handy because immediately it applies your uh, changes. And so there is this new uh, tab with this kind of uh, colorful box where you can set the 3D render. So every layer, in addition to the 2D uh, map render, it can also have a 3D map render uh, assigned. Um, so now for points. For points, we have uh, three basic ways how to uh, render them. So the first one is to just use uh, basic uh, symbols like spheres or cubes or cylinders and a uh, few more options. And uh, you just apply a color, maybe some uh, transformation to scale them up or down, rotate and so on. And uh, that's it. The second option is to use uh, 3D models. So um, we use the asset import library uh, to load the 3D models. So uh, there is a wide range of models like uh, the Collada format or the wavefront object files and maybe 20 more. Um, these um, you can load and uh, you can as well change their color. Right now there are some limitations so uh, you can only uh, change the color of the whole uh, model. Uh, you can't like uh, change the co uh, colors of individual components. Um, then, um, yeah, thanks to uh, Raymond, can you also wave your hand? <laughs> ah, that's true. Uh, so we also have some uh, 3D models uh, from the community that you can use that are included with uh, QGIS. If you have some any suggestions, what would you like to have as 3D models, maybe you can talk to Raymond. Um, and the most recently, we have also support uh, for so-called bil uh, billboards. And that's basically um, if you want to use some 2D markers um, to be shown in the 3D scene, um, this is uh, what you get. So uh, these are uh, some kind of special objects or entities that uh, whenever you move the map around and rotate it, they are always facing the camera. So uh, they don't seem to be like from the 3D world. That's uh, one of the new features uh, done during the Summer of Code project. Uh, that's the billboard support is not even uh, released yet, but it will become uh, released in 3.10 version. So now for line rendering, uh, there are two options uh, right now how to do that. One is the simple lines, um, where you define the line width in uh, pixels, and the, um, the width doesn't change when you zoom in or zoom out. The other option is with the buffered approach, so that uh, what we do is just to take the um, line and buffer it with some uh, distance, let's say five meters, and so uh, this, is, um, uh, this is the width defined in map units, so that uh, as soon as you start uh, zooming uh, closer, also the uh, line appears uh, zoom out. The kind of unfortunate thing is that with uh, buffered rendering, we, don't, uh, we kind of ignore the Z coordinates, but uh, hopefully that will get uh, fixed as well at some point. Now for uh, polygon rendering, uh, that's uh, even more interesting. So there are basically four basic options uh, what to do. Um, the, you can, the, the most basic one is if you do, if you use just the planner um, entity. So if you have, let's say, uh, footprints of something, uh, by default it would uh, be shown just as a, like a planner feature. Uh, you can use extrusion to get this kind of box uh, shape. And uh, the extrusion, it can be based on some, it can be either a constant uh, height, let's say 20 meters, 
or uh, you can have it um, based on an expression or so it can be a data defined value maybe you have an attribute with a number of levels of a building so you say that the extrusion is number of levels times let's say three meters uh, for more advanced use uh, there is uh, support for uh, 3d uh, 3d geometries um, so uh, one option is to use so-called polyhedral surfaces, or some call it polygon Z. Uh, so you have objects uh, like this, where uh, the where you have like really individual pieces of the um, object. So these are like planes um, that you render. And the last one is the triangular meshes. Um, it looks nearly the same. The only difference is that. In this case, it's a uh, really object consisting of uh, the individual triangles. Uh, it depends on the source of the data you get. Uh, sometimes it's uh, like the triangular mesh, sometimes it's uh, the polyhedral surfaces. Um, and you can get a nice visualization like this, including roofs and everything. Um, in one of the recent versions, we have added the uh, highlighting of polygon edges. So this has been a very um, important improvement for the uh, like rendering of buildings. This is, for example, a model of the uh, city of uh, Prague uh, with the buildings there. So it's uh, one of the free um, models that you can download and use. Um, another thing for uh, the uh, styling is that uh, we also support uh, rule-based rendering. So it's not that you use just a single symbol for all the features within a layer, but you can define a bunch of rules. Every rule can have, let's say, different colors or uh, even different types of symbols. Um, just a short note about the handling of Z values. So if you have uh, true uh, 3D uh, coordinates, um, there are several ways how the Z value can be applied. So uh, this is decided by the altitude clamping, which you can set in the uh, layer configuration. So it can be either relative, where you also use the Z um, value of the terrain, plus Z value of the geometry itself, or just uh, use the absolute or clamp it to terrain. Um, another thing is the altitude binding, where you kind of decide whether the terrain elevation is uh, taken just from the centroid, which is, let's say, more useful for uh, rendering of buildings. And or the other option is to use per vertex. So, for example, if you have a road, uh, you don't want to just take a centroid of the whole road, but uh, you want to sample the uh, z-value from every vertex. Now, for the 3D maps tools, um, so the basic tool, of course, is navigation. Uh, you can use a mouse or keyboard to navigate. Um, now, with the not yet released version, that's another improvement uh, from Summer of Code. You can also use on-screen controls. It's good for beginners when they are not yet completely sure about the um, other means of um, moving the map. Um, there is identification tool, which works exactly the same way as uh, with uh, 2D. Um, map tool for identification, just click on a point. It can be either on the terrain or it can be the 3D entity and you will get the results on a dog widget. Um, another improvement from the Summer of Code uh, project is the measurement tool. So now you can go around, if you can see this orange line, uh, line here, uh, click several points and get the um, true 3D distance. So, and uh, for some more functionality, uh, we have uh, print layout support. So, uh, if you need to print maps, now you can as well. Uh, you can even put multiple views on the same 3D scene into a single print layout. You just uh, set the view in your um, 
main window and then uh, get it, get all the configuration copied to the print layout. Okay, uh, we have support for animations. So if this works, uh, you can define several keyframes um, within your animation. So let's say um, in, for the first uh, keyframe at the time zero, you set the camera position to be here. For the uh, next keyframe, you set the camera position somewhere else, and QGIS3D will do the um, interpolation of the frames and uh, um, yeah, do, do the hard work for you. Um, then uh, we can also do uh, export of animations. So the animation you have prepared, you don't need to export it frame by frame manually. That would be a bit tedious. Um, you can, with this tool, create like a whole bunch of um, pictures in one folder and then use some third party tool to kind of join all the pictures to, uh, together uh, to some AVI animation or so. Uh, for some of the advanced features, or advanced, um, it's possible to also enable terrain shading. So by default, uh, we just render the uh, texture as it is um, without applying any uh, light on it. Um, but um, in various cases, if you want to uh, better see, let's say, like small details in the uh, ter uh, terrain model, you can enable the shading and you can see that uh, um, the small differences are much easier to see or you can uh, even apply like some um, shininess to the uh, model. As well you can configure lights, like by default there is a single light on top of the scene in the center but uh, if you are up for something, something more fancy you can change the colors of the lights or uh, their positions and uh, so on. So quickly about the data for 3D. Um, one very nice source for the data is the CityGML format or its kind of younger cousin CityJSON. Um, there is nowadays a very nice plugin, CityJSON Loader. Um, which with like few clicks you can load the data in QGIS and you can as well get uh, the data automatically styled. So for example here, this is one of the example files from um, Delft, I think. And uh, yeah, it's uh, very handy. OpenStreetMap is a good source of uh, buildings data, but uh, not that many buildings have uh, like uh, elevation information, so that's also something for the OpenStreetMap community maybe to keep working on. Um, and for myself, I started, uh, for me, uh, doing like a registry of um, 3D data available. There is not that much there yet, but so if you have some good tips uh, with um, free open data, I would be happy to uh, see some uh, feedback from you on that. And uh, finally, for the future, uh, the near future is that um, there is another small QGIS grant um, to kind of improve support for um, large scenes, to make them load faster, to l uh, make them load in the background so it doesn't freeze your um, user interface. Um, and like for the far future, we have a long wish list. Like, I'm very happy that Every time I do a presentation about QGIS 3D, I need to change the wish list because there are new and new features implemented from it. So, but still, there are plenty of rendering techniques we would like to implement, like shadows or transparency, new uh, materials, like uh, to be able to show textured objects, um, and plenty of other things. Of course, uh, support for globes. Right now, we just support, like, uh, let's say, local scenes which are in one like flat area. Um, yeah, some uh, protocols like 3D tiles, uh, support for point clouds, that would be amazing. 
and uh, things like animation of data within the scene. So right now you can only move the camera around, but it would be nice to be also able to, let's say, move individual objects there. And uh, that's it. So thank you very much. It's perfect, 20 minutes uh, exactly, uh, as you did, so I don't know what my um, uh, function is here, but um, there are probably some questions I expect uh, are there. There's five minutes left. Okay, I count about five, I think. Uh, start in the back. Can you tell anything about the hardware you need? The hardware you need to do all this? Just any ordinary laptop is fine. Uh, the reason I ask this is, uh, can you also run it within the VM? Without any hardware for the GPU? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Vincent says you can. I haven't tried it myself, but it should be possible if you have the, like, um, some extended uh, GPU support there. Or maybe it just works out of the box. Another item for your wish list, perhaps, but uh, have you considered procedural modeling, aka city engine in other worlds, uh, ability to drive 3D models? Uh, yes, that would level be. Of detail, perhaps. That would be awesome. I will probably put it uh, to the wish list for the next time. Uh, what about um, the PostGIS uh, 3D support? Uh, it has been improved, but uh, how far? But this should just work out of the box. So if you have uh, 3D geometries in PostGIS, you can just load them and uh, they... Tin? Uh, tin should work as well, I think. Haven't tried though. Thanks for a nice uh, overview. And uh, um, I'm interested in this uh, uh, billboard uh, implementation. Uh, do you also implement that for the labels? Uh, not yet. So <laughs> labels, I think that will be like the next thing that um, uh, would be worth implementing with uh, billboards. So this was kind of like first step in order to be able to also show labels later. More questions? I think we still have time, but I left my phone on my seat. Thank you very much. Uh, have you considered about uh, something about the point clouds as just displaying the point clouds over the city scale or uh, over the small projects? Um, yeah, um, I would love to have point cloud support in QGIS. The thing is that um, there is kind of longer path towards that. So first of all, we kind of need to have some um, like support to just like for data providers to open these formats and so on. Some uh, to integrate some libraries that already work with point clouds, and then maybe the next step would be to allow like 2D and 3D rendering of them. So definitely something we would like to have, but uh, we are not there yet. Maybe, um, if possible, we would try to run like a crowdfunding campaign uh, to get like interested parties uh, to uh, help out with that. Okay, because there are some other successful uh, open source projects uh, which could be easily integrated to QGIS, as we have in QGIS we have done it with uh, Grass and other projects. Uh, so I think it would have been it would make sense to build on the top of that just fork the project and start from there because then you don't need to build the basic engines for that. Yeah, definitely. Like the, for point clouds especially, there is this great uh, PDAL library or Poodle or I don't know what's the it's proper both are valid. <laughs> yeah, pronunciation. And that one would be like the first thing to look at uh, for the integration. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Any more questions? I think we still have time. One more minute. No? Then uh, thank you, Martin. <laughs>